ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930 present The Drive. Brought to you by Huntington Federal Savings Bank. Local women, local men. Member FDIC. It is Tuesday, March 16th. Your drive begins now on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. I'm your host, Paul Swan. You can join the program by calling the White Claw phone lines at 877-420-TALK. That is 877-420-8255. White Claw, hard seltzers made pure. What do we got going on today? Well, coming up at 515, we're going to talk to the head coach of the Marshall men's soccer team, Chris Grassy. He's going to join us here in the next few minutes. Looking forward to talking to him. We haven't done that in a while. And, of course, the soccer team is doing well Latest coaches rankings come out. They're eighth. That is impressive. Also, Conference USA recognizing that good things happening with the Marshall soccer team. And so Nathan DeSantos named Conference USA Offensive Player of the Week. So we're going to talk about that with Coach. We'll later on get your phone calls. As I mentioned, 877-420-TALK, 877-420-8255. Looking forward to catching up with you. Also, you can find me online. Twitter's the best place, at Paul Swan. Or if you're a Facebook person, you can find our Facebook page and our group. Just do a search for The Drive with Paul Swan. So, Good stuff happening for the Marshall volleyball team. We hope to get Ari Agnes on. She's been really busy. And you know why? Because she's probably having to open up the the mailbox to pull out all that hardware coming the herd's way. Herd softball, of course, doing good things. And hopefully some hardware coming their way soon. But herd volleyball doing well. First of all, you've got, I think, really one of the the best in conference USA and that's Sierra Bell. I mean is that fi- is that safe to say one of the best in conference USA. If she's not, I'd like to see someone who's better. Now, she's been a huge asset to the volleyball team for Ari Agnes for that squad and the good news comes out today that she earns offensive Player of the Week in Conference USA. So, congratulations to Sierra DeBell, Conference USA Offensive Player of the Week. And then, the awards keep coming in. Because on the defensive side is Sarah Shank. So, she earns Defensive Player of the Week in Conference USA. But I'm not done. Sydney Lasomo, Setter of the Week. So you get Sierra DeBell, Conference USA Award. That's one. One. That's pretty good. Then you get Defensive Player of the Week, and that's two. And then you get Setter of the Week. That's three. You know what that is? That's a sweep. What the Herd did this weekend, that's a sweep. So... Congratulations to Sierra DeBell, to Sydney Lasomo, and to Sarah Shank winning Offensive Player of the Week, Defensive Player of the Week, and Setter of the Week in Conference USA. Good weekend for the Thundering Herd and Ari Agnes' squad. We'll hopefully get her back on soon. I mean, that means things are going well for the volleyball team. I like where they're going at right now. I, I like where they're putting this team. And then, of course, men's soccer doing some outstanding things, so I like what they're doing. As I mentioned, we're going to talk to the head coach himself, Chris Grassy. He's going to join us here in the next few minutes, and we'll talk to him, get his thoughts on the season, how it's been progressing so far, and just to have him talk to him for a while. So it's kind of want to get his feelings on being back out there on the pitch and coaching once again. So uh, congratulations to everyone there. And, of course, we got March Madness coming up this week. I'm looking forward to that. We're going to not be on the air on Friday with the show. Thursday, we've got evening games. Friday, we have got wall-to-wall. Feels good. It really feels good. We're right back to where we need to be with all of this. So if you're in the office on Friday, you're trying to figure out, all right, can't watch the games on TV, we've got you covered. We'll have round-robin coverage. And we'll have the first four coming up on Thursday, and then... We'll get things rolling on Friday with our wall-to-wall coverage. 
So if they're playing the NCAA tournament, you can listen to all the action right here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. Also on our sister station, Cat Sports 93.3 and 1340. But uh, we've got soccer coming up tomorrow as well. Uh, men's team taking on Kentucky. That's set for 5 o'clock. The women's soccer team taking on Western Kentucky on the road. That is coming up at 6 o'clock. That is tomorrow. So men's soccer at UK tomorrow. Women's soccer at Western Kentucky. And then baseball action coming up on Friday. Softball action on Saturday. We've got plenty of time to tell you all about that. But uh, coming up this week, it's going to be soccer. That's Thursday. Now, let 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 me make sure I said that right. Thursday. Thursday soccer action. Men's soccer women's soccer. So that's your Thursday lineup. And of course, you've got basketball action right here on your radio and on Friday as well. So we've got you covered. Looking forward to all the action. I'll tell you what, when we continue, let's go ahead and take our break now. When we continue, we're going to be back here talking to the head coach of the Marshall soccer team, Chris Grassy. Looking forward to catching up with him when we continue with today's edition of The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. Now, back to The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. We are presented by Huntington Federal Savings Bank. Welcome back to today's edition of The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. Our phone lines brought to you this hour by White Claw at 877-420-TALK. And joining us now on those White Claw phone lines, he is the head coach, of the Marshall men's soccer team, and it's uh, long overdue that we've had him on the radio. Chris Grassy joins us, and Coach, uh, first of all, it's been a while. I'm glad we can finally get you back on and talk about action on the field instead of talking about pandemic and all of that. It, it feels good to have you back on the radio, and it feels good to, to watch Marshall soccer these past couple of weeks. Yeah, no, thanks for having me back on. It's it's, it's great to be on, and uh, yeah, great to be having having soccer season and. and playing soccer and coaching soccer and kind of getting on with it and not thinking too much about the pandemic that we've been in. So this is fantastic. How's it feel? Uh, I know, um, you know, everyone's got that first moment when they're finally back out there uh, and feeling like it's normal again. What's it like for you finally getting back out there and feeling like, okay, uh, let's just go play. Let's just go and do this now. Yeah, it's been, I mean, it's been, a, it's been a long time coming in the fall. So we had sort of half the group here. Um, and then in the spring, it sort of slowly kicked on, and it just took a while to, to get going, I think, and, and to feel real. And now that we're in conference play, it really does feel um, it feels like a, we're back in the we're back in the swing of things, and the games feel like they're coming a little thicker and faster. Um, and I don't know if that's just our you know our weariness to it. I mean, my staff and I were joking at the beginning, like we needed a preseason because you go from this COVID break to all of a sudden we are working, you know. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, preparing the scouts and getting everything ready. And it's like, we needed a little bit more of a, a preseason for the coaching, you know, the coaching work again. So, uh, you know, but it's, it's been fantastic. I mean, this is the life that we love. This is, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a lifestyle, not a job. And it's fantastic to be back in it. And kind of, I always think of the soccer pitch as like a bit of a spiritual place, you know, where everything, all that once you cross those white lines, all the troubles of, of the world sort of leave you alone. And sort of to get to spend a lot of time out there is, it's fantastic and refreshing, and sort of we all know who we are when we're on the pitch. How do you feel where you're at right now? As you mentioned, you're now into conference play. You had a pretty challenging non-conference slate, and you get into conference play, and coming up on Thursday, you're taking on University of Kentucky, and I'm sure we could talk hours about that matchup, but just going into that, how you feel about uh, where this team is at at this point? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy with, with where we're at because we we played really well against FIU on Saturday. I think it was the first time all season that I'd really seen us start to gel and, and find some of that chemistry that we had in, in 2019 and be able to put some of those attacking players and possession players together. I thought that we did that excellent. We were still we're still missing a few things. I, I don't think we were anywhere near our finished product yet, which is really exciting as a coach because you know we we win but we still have things to work on, which is you know, the best part, sort of the, the sweet spot in coaching because if we had nothing to work on, you know, training sessions would be a little bit little bit difficult. But I feel really good about where the team's at. Obviously, we've had a couple of new guys to come in. We've had a couple of surprise positions in terms of like how things have ended up and 
and which guys we feel like we can do the job. You know, one of them being, you know, Colin Mosiunis has done a, a fantastic job switching into centre back, um, and he's not your traditional centre back where you know those guys are six foot, six foot three. Um, you know, he's he's a bit smaller, and but he's very quick, and he, and he reads the game so well, and you know, plays it with his brain, and so he's done fantastically well to make that spot his own, and um, you know, whether sort of the better for it as a team, and so I think, you know, once we can get um, our forwards sort of firing. We've had, you know, Vito Diaz has, has been uh, popping up with a lot of goals, but, you know, the traditional guys, sort of Milo and Jamil, um, you know, Pedro, guys who scored a lot of goal for, goals for us in the past and had a lot of assists, they sort of haven't found their shooting boots yet. They haven't, you know, found their feet because really we're, we're sort of only six, seven games into it after such a long layoff. And I feel like that sharpness for those guys is just coming, but we've still managed to play well. We've still managed to win games. So, when we can put it all together, we can be even more dangerous than we are now. Well, right now you got a lot of people thinking you're pretty good. Number eight now in the United so- Soccer Coaches ranking. Also, Conference USA awarding Nathan DeSantos as the Offensive Player of the Week. So you come into today's show and going into the week with uh, a lot of praise, a lot of hardware, feeling pretty good. All that's great, but uh, you cake is make that go away real quick with a loss. Yeah, that's right. I mean, it's such a big game. I mean, they they dropped points against Charlotte in overtime, and obviously that was a very close game. And I uh, thought, you know, Kentucky actually had a couple of goals that were called back. Um, you know, so they, so they definitely, you know, could have won that game. And so it's, it is really like I try to tell the guys today: it's a, it's almost worth instead of three points, it's maybe worth six points, or it's it's like a conference semifinal. You know, I think ourselves, Kentucky, and Charlotte are all favourites to to finish the top of the conference, and so. You know, if, you know, we can beat Kentucky, we can probably eliminate them from the conversation. And then it comes down to us in Charlotte. So it's such a huge game against a rival school, um, you know, that, that we always match up pretty well with. Um, you know, in the past, I think we're, since I've been here, I think we've played them six times and we've won four. So I'm hoping we can continue that. But going to their place and playing, it, it's a tough place to play. They're very well organized, very well coached. Um, and they found a bit of found a bit of rhythm, you know. So it's going to be a tough match. What makes this one so special? If, of all the Conference USA schools you match up with, this is the one that even if you don't follow soccer at Marshall, you circle this one. You know it's a big deal. What makes this <laughs> more special than say Old Dominion or FAU or Charlotte? And you know Charlotte's probably got an argument for being just as special here these last few years. Yeah, so, I mean, Kentucky, it's, you know, we've played them every year in conference since 1991. Um, it's the, the closest Division One program to us, so it's, it's our natural rival. Um, I know they might, might have a bit more of a rivalry with, with Louisville, um, but in terms of soccer, you know, we've been playing each other every year since 91, and I think, you know, you get those, the players know each other. You know, I think probably these two groups are a little bit more friendly than, than past groups, but there's been that sort of, you know, there's a, there's a friendly rivalry competition now and, and with us always competing against them, you know, and I think they were always the standard for, for such a long time, um, you know, for something that they were always just a little bit ahead of ahead of Marshall. And, and so sort of now, we, you know, we got the championship last year, so the, the kind of roles are reversed for the first time uh, going into this year. But it's, it is, I mean, it's local rivalry. It's it's two schools that have been playing, playing each other forever. Um, and, and it basically means so much. I mean, they need to win. To, to win the to have a chance of winning the conference and we need to win to you know put ourselves in the driving seat to win the conference and you know it's a meaningful game championships on the line it's a rivalry game there's a lot of history I mean it just it checks all the boxes and you mentioned you got to win that regular season because the regular season means so much more now I mean, with the restructuring of postseasons for at least the uh, the interim, you got to win that conference championship if you really want to make it to the next level and try to make a run in the tournament because, yeah, you might not be guaranteed a spot if you don't win that conference championship now. Yeah, I mean, you're absolutely correct. I mean, this year we're not playing a, a conference tournament and, and hopefully that comes back uh, in the fall. But I think right you know, right now from, it's, the, it's the regular season. And for me, it's always the regular season. I think that's a truer barometer of where you are as a program. Um, than, than sort of like a knockout competition, you know, at the end of the year, like where you're playing, you know, a game every couple of days with, with very little rest. And 
you know, for me, I like to see where we are at, at the end of the regular season. So that's always of primary importance to, to, to me as a coach and to our team anyway. So I think, you know, nothing really changes changes for us uh, within within that. It's, it's just now it means even more because the AQ is, you know, tied to whoever wins this wins this conference. Tough matchup. Marshall ranked eighth. Kentucky ranked 11th. Of course, that stuff really doesn't matter to you once the two teams uh, take the field. But that says something for what Marshall's been able to do, what Conference USA has been able to do. You've talked about this before. This is, I don't think people still realize, maybe you are still casual fans, this is one of the toughest soccer conferences in college athletics. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, I definitely think, you know, with us, you know, obviously your traditional Power Five conferences, um, two of those guys don't play in, in men's soccer. So the, the SEC schools all play in Conference USA, and Conference USA with, with ourselves and with, with FIU, with Charlotte, with South Carolina, um, you know, and with, with Kentucky is, you know, there's always teams in the top 10, top 25, you know, so we, we are sort of the, one of the top five uh, conferences for, for talent and talented teams in the country. Yeah, so it's, it's a tough conference to win, and it means a lot to, to win it. Charlotte's sure, receiving votes this week in the poll as well. But while I've got you here, I know it's looking ahead, and you can't look too far ahead, but it was announced uh, recently Coastal Carolina is going to be joining Conference USA in soccer. just want to get your thoughts on what they bring as a program to the soccer field and you know how excited are you to face off against a program like Coastal Carolina? Yeah, it's very exciting for the conference. You know, we've been sort of on the lookout for a, for a program um, to replace New Mexico. You know, New Mexico were, were sort of a, um affiliate member of Conference USA before they left, and, and they'd been to the Final Four. Um, they, they'd had a lot of success. So we needed a, a team that was sort of up there. And if you look at the RPI over the last, you know, seven years, you know, Coastal Carolina definitely meet that bill. Uh, top 25 team um, to add to the conference. So it, it really strengthens us. You know, I'm looking forward to the challenge. I think whenever you get to bring in, um, you know, an experienced coach like Sean Dockin, who's, um, you know, put a tremendous program out every year. And, I mean, they've dominated the, the smaller conferences that they've been in. So, And we've, we've played them before in preseason, so we know what, what kind of good outfit they are. FIU's coach uh, was a long-time former assistant there, uh, the head coach. So, so we have cross paths with them. We know what they're going to bring. We're excited with what they're going to bring to the conference. They're going to raise the profile of the conference even further. It, it's all good stuff, and, and, and it just helps us go from strength to strength. Chris Grassi joining us, Marshall soccer coach. The men take on University of Kentucky on Thursday, March 18th. And then you get about a week off, and I can look ahead. You can't. But uh, West Virginia is <laughs> on the schedule. How fun is that going to be? Uh, last time you met them was at Hoops Family Field. Now you're going back to their place to, to play. And how fun is that going to be to have two quality programs in state go at each other and hopefully on a yearly basis? Well, yeah, I think, I mean, we're, we plan on making this a yearly game. Obviously, their, their coach, uh, Dan Stratford, worked with me for, for three or four years at Charleston, and we're good friends. Um, and we just know how much this game means to the state. You know, when we worked together at Charleston, it was we could never believe that, that this game was not a regular thing. Uh, we both know we could sell out three or four times over uh, for the game. So we just think it's such a big, big deal for the um, big deal for the state of soccer, big deal for us. I mean, it's two good programs going to go at it. Um, I know they'll be very tough. I know they had a had a good away victory against Charlotte three um, 0 and they've definitely you know got some weapons there, and and Strats is kind of reforming that program. So it's going to be such a such a good game. I'm so excited to, to finally get this game on the books and make it a regular thing. I mean, we, we saw the passion of the fans in, in the NCAA tournament game in 2019 where we beat them here, and, and hopefully we, we can continue to do that. You know, the biggest thing for me that's missing is we don't have a name for this game. We don't have a trophy on the line, and we're, you know, we've been talking in the last few days about you know what are we going to call this game. Is it going to be the Black Bear game for the, the state animal, or is it going to be the pickaxe game? Or is it going to be the Jim Justice Cup? Or what are we going to call this? What are we going to call this event? Um, and so we can kind of make even more buzz about it. We can have a trophy on the line. We can make it such a meaningful game every year. You know, that just adds one more exciting chapter for these student athletes to, to sort of something to compete for and, and something else to kind of have bragging rights for. And, and we just think that will help load up even more. So I don't know, maybe we've got to have like a competition with your listeners there to try and come up with the best 
the best name for this this annual game between Marshall and West Virginia in men's soccer. I like it. There should be a trophy. There should be a cup or something and, and make it special. And yeah, you know, just based off that one game, uh, how much of a, a boost have you felt, even with the layoff for a year, that this game, the run in the NCAA tournament, and just the excitement around it has really, I'm sure, helped you grow the sport in the state of West Virginia and, of course, uh, in the surrounding area? Yeah, I mean, I think it was it was so amazing to obviously we've been at limited capacity here with with the crowd. I think we only have like a three hundred and thirty uh, person limit right now with with COVID concerns and ever, and everything like that. And I think even through that, you know, the messages of support we've gotten from the community and the fact that people are still, you know, excited for this and people trying to get tickets to the W, you know, driving up to see the WVU game. I mean, it's been really, it has been really heartwarming and really sort of exciting to see how people have you know, continue to, to, to follow us and, and to support us and to, you know, be thinking of us during this time. I think it's uh, it, it's really nice. And, and we just hope we can continue to, to grow it. I mean, my dream one day would be to play, you know, Marshall WVU and play in front of 20,000 people, you know. And I think that's, it's not insane to think that. I think that's something we can definitely, definitely get to, you know, ten, whether it's 10 years or 15 years from now. Or, you know, I think it's something we can we can work towards for sure. Okay, I got a reminder text from someone listening to the program, um, sort of a historian, and he reminded me that Marshall, West Virginia, and I should have remembered this, used to play for the Golden Boot. So maybe that needs to come back. You used to play for the Golden Boot? Yes, so we'll have to put our <laughs> okay. we'll, we'll put our research people on that. I mean, maybe a new, bigger <laughs> trophy, something that's not a boot, maybe a cup. Uh, I, I like the yeah. pick, I like the pickaxe. That sounded that sounded pretty good. But just a little nod to the you know the coal miners in, in West Virginia there, but also something we can uh, we can have on display and and you know hopefully you know not swing around too violently at the end of the game, but you know just kind of swing it above our heads there a little bit and have something and uh, something to play for. I like the idea. I hope it gets uh, it, it comes to fruition sooner than later, and uh, it's some grand trophy that uh, both team will uh, really want to you know play for. Um, I'm excited for that. That that's fantastic that you're doing that, and uh, hopefully, uh, we're talking about you hanging on to that trophy for many years to come. Yes, definitely. And I think uh, you know, two big. Uh, at least I don't have to motivate the guys this week. You know, we got two huge rivalry games Thursday, then Wednesday. You know, Kentucky and then WVU. So, so I won't have to motivate them until after those games. Chris Grassy joining us, head coach of the Marshall soccer team. Hey, congratulations. Uh, Everything's been going fantastic for you. Good luck against Kentucky. I'm excited that we get to have you back on and talk again since we're right now in the middle of everything. So uh, this sure beats what we were doing last year, and I'm glad you're back with me. Certainly does, yeah. Thanks for having me, and you know, very excited and have me on anytime. Chris Grassy, appreciate him joining us on the program. And of course, the Thundering Herd taking on Kentucky. That is going to be on ESPN+. Plus. 5 o'clock on Thursday. We will take our next time out. We will take your phone calls, 877-420-TALK, 877-420-8255. If you want to be a part of the program, White Claw, hard seltzer, made pure, 877-420-TALK. More on the way, it's The Drive, ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. Buckle up, Paul Swan has the wheel on The Drive, ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. We are presented by Huntington Federal Savings Bank. Welcome back. It's The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930 for this Tuesday, March 16th. Just a couple of days away from the start of March Madness. Have you got your bracket filled out yet? We're going to break all of that down tomorrow. We'll take a look at the bracket a little bit more. Also, you have an opportunity to play with like-minded fans People just like you, people who listen to this program, we've got the link right now on our Facebook group and the page as well. You can find it by searching The Drive with Paul Swan. We've got a page, we've got a group, and I've got it posted, I believe, on the group. We'll get you in. We've got our bracket. You can join us. Or if you're on ESPN's bracket already, you can just do a search for The Drive with Paul Swan, and you can find it that way. Go ahead and join the group. It's free to play. We're not playing for any prize other than just pure satisfaction that you did well, that you, in the midst of this pandemic year, able to navigate the chaos that is 
college basketball. That's what you're playing for. And, of course, you can sign up right now if you're playing on ESPN. Just search The Drive with Paul Swan or do one better. Go to our Facebook page. You can get into the group, and you can join the group. We hope you join the group. Hit the link, and it will take you right there. So I'm looking forward to seeing what your brackets look like. And, of course, I'm probably going to just for the – for the safety of it, I'm just going to go chalk, maybe make an adjustment here or there. I really haven't figured out yet what, if any, upsets I'm going to shoot for. I don't want to overthink this because I think that's where I'm going to get into trouble, especially with the way this thing is seated. It looks like it's closer to chalk than it truly ever has been, and the geography is not a factor. So you're not trying to move teams around to accommodate them and the geography. Everyone's playing in the same general vicinity, so you're not worried about, okay, we are, we're we sending this team out west where we shouldn't be, so we got to pull them and seed them differently so we can keep them out east or in the Midwest or keep them in this. No, I like this. This is straight up, let's go. Best one versus the low six team and go from there. Something I would like to see the NCAA do here in the future, I think the last teams that get in, should be the teams that have to play in the first four. I don't think it's fair that you make some of the teams that earn an automatic bid, some of the lower respected conferences, for lack of a better term, some of those teams. I think if you're Syracuse, you should be playing on day one and prove that you'd need to be in there. And I would schedule those teams. Look, if you're the last group of teams in, you're the teams that are on the outside looking in. You didn't earn your way in with a conference championship or you're sitting on the fence. I think you should be playing on Thursday. Just my feeling about it. Hopefully the NCAA will make some adjustments there, but I would like to see that happen a lot more. Let's be honest. Some of these conferences, they work hard. These kids work all year long. They win their conference championship, and then they got to play. And even though the NCAA doesn't, Say it's a play-in game. It's a play-in game. It, it's the first four. It's not the – this year is going to be a little different. It's going to feel weird across the board. But still, come on. Let's let some of those teams that had to sweat it out, those teams that are the last teams uh, in, let them play on that first day and let some of the other teams get to play in the tournament proper. It's just my feeling on that. And, of course, you know, we're sitting here hoping that – Again, I feel bad about it, but you're hoping that things happen and maybe Marshall can get into the NIT because Marshall was one of the first four out, which, okay, that might make a nice T-shirt. 2021 NIT alternate, Marshall Thundering Herd. Still, that's close. That's better than I thought it would be. To be fair, that's better than I thought it would be. And thankfully, we're not seeing any... Anything towards a, a CBI. I didn't hear any, nothing, no conversation, not even an inkling of a, a, a thought about it, nothing like that, nothing. And so, thankfully, we're not going through that. The CIT was fun. It was great. Had a great time. Hope to not go back. We'll come back and get your phone calls in, 877-420-TALK, 877-420-8255. To be a part of the White Claw phone lines, I'm Paul Swan. This is The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Presented by Huntington Federal Savings Bank. We're wrapping up today's edition of The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. I didn't forget, I just had a lot I wanted to talk about, but I need to say hello and congratulations to Tavion Kinsey today. He was named to the National Association of Basketball Coaches 2020-21 Division I Men's Basketball All-District 11 First Team today. He was also named First Team All-Conference USA last week. How do you get on this list? Well, you scored 19.5 points per game, which is the 28th most in the country. And you have 11 games of 20 or more points, including a career high back on December 3rd. You're going to get some people's attention. He is second in Conference USA, 48th in Division I men's basketball in field goal percentage. 
So he's on the list. Congratulations to him for his efforts and I hope everything that he wants good to happen comes to him, comes to him. It's going to be interesting to see what Marshall's basketball team is going to look like here in the near future. What it will look like as far as players are concerned. Because the big question, which players are going to come back? Which players want to come back and which players are going to move on? And so all of that's going to be determined real soon, and we'll see what the composition of this team is going to look like. It's not going to look the same. Whatever happens here in the next few weeks, I don't think it's going to look the same. I'll be surprised if it looks the same and you add some pieces to it, but at the end of the day, I think there's going to be some changes coming, and that's going to be partially players who have put their time in and they're ready to move on with the next phase of their life. Now, as far as Conference USA is concerned, Charles Bassey, named Associated Press All-American Honorable Mention today. It's his first All-American Award of the season. He is, of course, uh, racking in the awards. The uh, NABC District 11 first team, Tavion Kinsey's on it. But Charles Bassey is on it. Javion Hamlet's on it. Jameer Young. Hamlet, of course, from Texas. You remember him. Jameer Young from Charlotte. Javon Jackson from UTSA. So that's the first team. Second team, not a mention of any Marshall player. Second team is Tavion Hollingsworth, uh, Bryson Williams, uh, Taven Lovin from UAB, uh, Malik Curry from Old Dominion, uh, no Jared West, uh, Eric Conkle, Louisiana Tech Coach of the Year. Uh, Charles Bassey also uh, made District 4 first team. Uh, also, Javon Jackson made District 7 first team from the USBWA. That's the United States Basketball Writers Association. Sorry, I voted. I can say this. I did did vote for Tavion. I threw a vote out there for him. Sorry. Uh, My vote wasn't enough. Still, Conference USA getting some love on the basketball court. And, of course, uh, we're all going to be watching North Texas, and we're going to be keeping an eye on what they do, and we'll be looking at the NIT. How many of you are actually going to watch the NIT watch those games involving Conference USA schools. Is that something you do? Sure, it's not Marshall. But do you do that? Do you look at Conference USA schools and and sort of hope that, okay, let's root for these guys. Let's root for these teams and see if they can't win some games and then sort of, I'm not saying ride off the coattails of their success, but... If teams in Conference USA can win more in the NCAA tournament, North Texas can go in there and win. And if Western Kentucky can go into the NIT and win some games and maybe maybe win the thing, I don't know. How much benefit does that come back to Conference USA? How much benefit do you see when you are, you're out there talking about Conference USA? Because if Conference USA isn't thought of well, I mean, sure, kids will come to Marshall because they want to play for Coach Dan Tony. but if Conference USA isn't all that, how many kids are you really going to have those conversations with? I mean, it's not like in Conference USA football where the sheer will and personality and the charisma that Coach Huff at this moment commands is drawing people to him. You see Twitter, and let me tell you, his Twitter game is completely different than Doc Holliday's. I mean, Doc was a wake up, get dressed, come to work. He's probably coming in early like all coaches do, puts his nose to the grindstone, works all day, just grinds, 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 and then at the end of the day, he's done. Didn't look at social media. It wasn't his thing. Coach Huff Doing the same thing. Because, again, all these coaches are wired this way. They, they get up early. They, they go to the grindstone to get some coffee now. Get to the office. Coach Huff is probably composed by the time most of us wake up. He's probably composed 50 tweets. I don't know. I'm going to tell you right now. The multimedia, social media portion of Marshall football and athletics has has jumped. Seriously. Every time I turn around, there's a new notification on my phone. Okay, what's Coach Huff doing now? And 
for a while, I was kind of joking around, maybe I'm going to have a segment on the show to tell you what Coach Huff is doing on a daily basis. And if I go to him right now, I can probably find some interesting things, see what he's doing. Okay, he's retweeting stuff about how the players are, you know, individual players, how they performed, You know, talking about the fourth quarter, and that's important for him to give these kids a lot of praise, let them know that their hard work is appreciated, and he's got the coaches doing that as well. This is the most I've seen Marshall football on social media. I mean, yesterday we talked about it. Coach Huff had this Marshall Madness bracket in which I determined the winners based on, well, the correct answer. And the correct answer will be the 1996 National Championship facing off against the 1992 National Championship with the 1992 National Championship winning over the 96. It's tough. It was a tough call. But I had to take 92 over 96. I was here for both of them in the stands. Thankfully, the way it worked out for me, I can honestly say as a student, I was a student during the 92 and 96 championships. That's a fantastic college career. You go to college and you come out and the team that you... um, that you've been following as a kid, and you now get to go to college there. Yeah, a couple of national championships. That was fun. And I know the MAC championships were really fun for another generation as well. But for me, that 92 championship was something else. And plus, playing Youngstown State, I didn't like those guys. Respect them. Did not like them. Flightless waterfowls they are, the Penguins. Jim Trestle coming in here with that team, and you're just thinking to yourself, yeah, should have had them in 91, and Marshall has to get a, a last-second field goal to win it heroically, march down the field, get that field goal, and, and the goalposts go down, and everybody in Huntington is happy and rejoicing because uh, if great weight was lifted off the hearts of a lot of longtime old herd fans that have been through so much, and that was probably the most special moment in martial athletics. And your special moment might be different than mine, but for me, it's going to be the 1992 National Championship. Michael Payton. That's going to be always, for me, the special moment, the most special moment. But, again, it's because of my life experiences, so your special moment is not invalid. Uh, As far as his bracket's concerned, though, it might be wrong if it doesn't line up with my opinion. I'm just going to tell you that right now. That's going to do it for this edition. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, I want to thank Coach Grassy, Marshall soccer coach Chris Grassy, joining us on the program. We will be back tomorrow, and we're going to do this all over again right here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. Huntington, your flagship home of the Marshall Thundering Herd and The Drive with Paul Swan, ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930.